Previously on the Adventure Zone. We're sending you in to detain and extract Lucas for his abuse of confidential information. Standard protocol applies. The the regulator's boat, the storm is like picking them up and you watch them sort of disappear out of sight. A rift appears in the air directly in front of you. A small light pops out. All of these crystal shards are flying together and sort of self-forming to create a crystal golem. That's that's Hodgepodge, the buddy bot. He's going to teach the youth of tomorrow to be, you, you know, sharp like me. Processing flame jets. The uh, late Merle High Church rolled a five. <laughs> In his final uh, act <laughs> of defiance. External communication detected. The three of you aren't cheating, are you? No. A little. No! <laughs> I hope our heroes know their long division, or else they're going to get long divided. The robot's gonna cut them in half, I mean. It's the adventure zone! Let's resolve this killer robot thing. Okay. Or maybe right. the three of you will all die. I don't know. If this is the last episode, let's really make it count. Yeah. 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 Please select the category. Can you remind uh can you remind us of the categories? Of course. I love to help. This is after he like shut down all the communications out of the room and got real mad. Yeah, right? your um your stones of far speech and uh the the pendant that the director gave you, um uh, are, are just not functioning anymore. Okay, um, cool. uh, yeah, you, you have no more contact with anybody from the outside world. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, the room is sort of has this blue staticky glow all around it that you assume is, is what is blocking all of this. Uh, and uh, Hodgepodge says, Math, science, magic, spelling, problem solving, history. Can I make a Griffin? Can I make an investigation check on Hodgepodge to see if I can see any visible yeah. sort of like switches or any any anything that might give me a hint as to how to stop him? Yeah, sure. I got an eighteen plus four twenty two. Uh, yeah, right on his tummy is a is a switch. Can I just say, I like just want to jump out, Justin. How did it, like, we did this for like 40 minutes last episode, and none of us, th- none of us thought, look for a switch. You're a genius. Yeah, he's got, yeah. A, he's got a switch, and it's right on his tummy. And it looks and just it says, like a, flip it looks, this. It looks like a light switch. Okay. Uh, I flip it. Okay. Uh, yeah, you, you reach over to flip this uh, light switch off, uh, and just as you're about to make contact with it, it sort of zips inside his body, and a metal panel closes over where the switch was. Oh, that happens to me when I get scared, too. <laughs> or when you've been swimming. Be but fair. I, I did it dexterously so he didn't notice. Uh, okay. Uh, he did notice. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Let me check the book. I could have sworn... <laughs> Does it say in your book that he noticed? Because I could have sworn he didn't notice. Yeah, I'm looking in the book that I have written for the Crystal Kingdom, the the, the novelization of it, and it says he noticed, which is the okay. weird thing. That's weird. Okay, well, I agree. Um, it's in the book. It's in the novelization, so I don't know what to tell you. You don't have to tell me anything. It's in the book. Yeah. It's out of the your book, hands. The book is available no, now from, pr- you. from Penguin Publishers. Let me publishers. thank you for trying. You're for taking the time <laughs> to try because it's like it's out of your hands. So thank you for, for trying. You're getting close to the bonus round. Hodgepodge says. Touch my bonus round. <laughs> a little lower, please. <laughs> please select a category and stop being gross. Math. History. Oh, that's good. No, we don't know shit about history. What are you talking about? We can't remember what we're doing right now. Math, history. Who <sighs> was the inventor of math? Pythagoras. No, okay, we're not just going to shout here. I have a history skill that I'm going to <laughs> roll against to see if uh, I know this. So are you doing history or math? I'm doing history of math. Of math. We I don't guess. have a math have skill a, check. Okay, is there a math check? What are you talking about? Yeah, it's just your fucking brain. You use your brain to add numbers together. Okay, 16. What are you even doing? I'm t- Okay, listen. You is that your bear- solution to the problem? You have to bear with me, okay? I would not know the... I, Justin McElroy, would not know the history of this world. Therefore, 
I would not have an answer to this question. My character, Taco, has innate skills in investigation and nature, history, religion, arcana, and religion. So okay. I am basing the whether or not I have this answer not based on whether I, Justin McElroy, know the inventor of math. I, of course, do. It's irrelevant. Uh, because His I, name was irrelevant? Is, was he a rapper? Okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I am seeing if Taco knows this. And I have okay. a 16 out of 20 the, shot. At, <laughs> 16 out of yes. 20 shot of knowing the, the history of the inventor of math in this fantasy world is what you're rolling to like check. the and history of this fantasy world. A yes. 16, like, a 16. Griffin, a, I love you. You're my brother. But if my skill called history does not literally help me with history <laughs> trivia questions in a category <laughs> called history, what are we even fucking doing here? This is Calvin Bomb. Uh, yeah, you you know the answer to this one. You have this. You got this fucking question dead to rights. And and, and I open my mouth. And what do I say? You say <laughs> you say Doug Math. <laughs> Dougie Math. Use your voice. Doug Math. That's right. <laughs> How did you? Uh... <laughs> it's time for the bonus round. Are you excited? We're pretty bonused. Yes. The bonus round is called Stump Hodgepodge. Can the three of you come up with a question that can stump your buddy bot Hodgepodge? I'll warn you, I possess an almanac of complete world knowledge. Oh, I get it. Okay, I've got a, qu I've got a question for you. Go ahead. Wait, should we? Can we? Can, can we like consult? No, no I'm into some Captain Kirk shit here. Oh, uh, okay, I got, good. I got this. Oh, I didn't realize. Question. Sorry, Kirk away. Uh, yeah. And let just hey Griffin on my fantasy tombstone. Can it say I trusted my dad? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank when you. you guys die, when your characters die, I'll let you do a full blown like uh, 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 Oregon Trail sort of okay. uh, tombstone customization. Got it. Okay, stuff. I trust you, Dad. Okay. And then your next, I, your I, next characters I, will find it when they get on the Crystal Kingdom ship. I am going to take a step behind Merle. Okay. And, I'll and take a step like pat him on that. You, yeah, you got this. All right. Hodgepodge? Yes. What is love? Love is a feeling of strong or constant affection from one you person to another. Fucking idiot. Mm. The correct question would have been what does love feel like, you stupid, <laughs> stupid bastard? <laughs> You're wrong, Hodgepodge. It's a score of I'm zero not. in tennis. No, you are the wrong one. I am right. That is what love is. Now we each get a shot, right? I think that would only be fair, Magnus. That was my question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Wasted opportunity. You got it right. Oh, damn it. Take a final chance. Okay, I have. I, what? Okay, Dad's got. Dad's angling for another try. No, no, I'll just tell you. No, don't you dare. I I have my question. Okay. All right. Why did the chicken? Oh God! Cross the this road. This is. That sounds like a hypothetical question, or perhaps even a joke. Why did the chicken <laughs> cross the road? Wait, is Griffin stumped by this? <laughs> Have you not heard this one? <laughs> this is not so much a question as much as it is the setup for a riddle joke. There is no, there is no definite answer to this question. Sounds like he's stumped. Oh, ooh, no. ooh, ooh. Yeah. It has to be trivia. Yes. Not bullshit. <laughs> oh, sorry, kids. Ask him how we solve this puzzle. Ask him how to turn him off. My how do we solve this puzzle? puzzle? By giving me a question that okay. I cannot answer. Here that is was your my... second question, Merle. Uh, here is my question. No, I was yes. asking Justin. He was... Uh, who's Taco. Justin? Taco. <laughs> <laughs> it's not pronounced like that. It's just it's how I... Okay. I said it as Taco. How do I shut you off? I am powered by Lucas's laboratory and its core power unit. <laughs> Only by shutting down the core power unit will I cease to function. This has not been a very exciting round of stone hodgepodge. <laughs> Can I ask another question? Yes, Magnus, just because I am feeling a little bit bored. What is a fact you don't know? There isn't one. I possess an almanac of complete world knowledge. All knowledge that exists in the world I possess. Who starred? <laughs> who starred in the hit TV show Melissa and Joey? <laughs> Accessing deep database reserves. <laughs> Melissa John Hart and Joey Lawrence. 
<laughs> Damn it. Okay. Now's mine. What was the name of the guard on today's special? Or the Canadian show? You remember. Today's special. What was the name of the guard on that show? The security guard in the Canadian children's television show, Today's Special, was... Google, 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 that unwrapped the, show. Yeah, did they cancel it? What, what did it, was it? His choice? It Do his they choice? still make Double Dare? Just they, like with still a different host. Double Dare. Well, according to his online diary, he did not prefer getting all slimy all the time. You know, we're we're passing up hey, a rare opportunity to answer every question we have in the universe. I am getting close to bringing this round of Stump Hodgepodge to an end. I got I got another question for you, Hodgepodge. <laughs> I'm just really enjoying our time together. Um. Could Pan make a rock so big even he couldn't lift it? This is a bad question. Okay. This seems like unfair. <laughs> and a little judgmental. I'm so bored. Me too. What's the largest prime number? It's up there. <laughs> All right. <laughs> On the ceiling. <laughs> All right. I'm bad now. This is stupid. <laughs> this game is not especially fair now that I think about it. Because if you know a thing, it exists in the world. And I will, of course, also know it. What's my fish's full name? Stephen Q. Fletcher Esquire. Damn, I think that's right. How many fingers? How many fingers do I have behind my back? This is not information that exists in the world. (laughs) Yes, it does. I disagree. That's information that exists in the world. I'm going to say four. Damn. Damn, Damn, he's right. (laughs) right. (laughs) Shit. Damn. God, that little robot's good. He is good. I want to make you a full-time character, Hodgepodge. I think a lot of people would really enjoy that. Well, come with us, then. Come join us. I can't. I am built into this pedestal. And Here, I- let me pick you up, uh- Strength Jack. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, his body is, like, part of this pedestal. He is, like, well, there's got to be off way. there? His, his torso is sticking out of it, like, Zoltan style. Cake or pie? Oh, God. The answer to that is, of course, pie. Hell yeah. Wrong. Yeah, bye for for life. Uh, 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 How would you feel about... (laughs) Can I just cast a spell on you? (laughs) Like, I'm used to solving things with magic. That would be, that would definitely be cheating. And cheating would have to be punished. Hodgepodge, I have a serious, important question. Go ahead. What was the source of the voice that we heard speaking through the crystal golem? That voice was generated by some sort of computer program. Cool. Next question. All right, I attack him. Okay. That's a 13 plus 7 at 20. Okay. Now, remember last time you attacked him, he was resistant to just melee Yeah, no, damage. no, I got it. I'm just sick of this whole question thing. <laughs> okay. And I'm trying to think like Magnus. You're like role-playing. Yeah, uh, oh. it's I'm, I'm chomping for some chopping. Let's do this. All right, roll damage. Okay. I can't remember what that is. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. Two-handed. 1d10 plus 6. That's 9 plus 6. 15. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's, a, that's a good hit. It's only 7 damage, though, that you did to him. Um, and he still looks pretty sturdy. And he goes, oh, you're being very predictable. Uh, and the flame jets kick on again. Everyone roll a dexterity saving throw. Yeah, use your 20. I have lost mine. Dad, it's like the most imp- uh, It's the only one I've lost. 14 <laughs> plus 2, 16. Okay, yeah, oh, you duck out of the way of the flames. Uh, and this is what kind of check? Uh, Dex- dexterity? Dexterity. 17. Yep, yeah. you duck out of the way as well. 16. And you duck out of the way as well. All three of you duck out of the way of, of these flames. Uh, and he goes, Wow, nice one. That sounded really sarcastic. It was a little bit. I'm getting <laughs> pretty bored. I've been so bored for so long. Is there nothing I don't know? I'm going to cast a spell. It's called Commune. Okay. I get to ask my deity a question, up to three questions, 
that can be answered with a yes or no. Okay. And you, Up Griffin. Three, no less than one. Griffin, you are the deity. All right. The DM is the deity. And you have to answer three questions, yes or no. Hello, it's me, Pan. What's oh, up? Wow. This is a new number. Who dis? <laughs> it's Dave, man. <laughs> Introduce yourself to your deity. I want to see this whole <clears throat> scene play out while I play it like you would play it. All right. Orange slices. Dear Pannonly Father, <laughs> it is I, your humble servant, Merle Hightower. Hi, Church. Yes. Hi, Towers from Police. Hi, Towers, my middle name. Hi, <laughs> Church is my last name. Just to make sure your name is Merle Hightower High Church. Yeah, but I just go by Merle. Anyway. And his middle name spelled like Hightower. Sick. I prostate myself in front of you. No. Nope. What? How can I help you, my child? <laughs> Please I, stop talking. I prostrate myself in front of you, begging your divine wisdom. Okay, I think I can only hit you back with yes or no answers, but let her rip. Question number one. Yes. Is there a question we can ask this damn robot so we can get on with this game? Yes. There are many questions. Oh, sorry, no. just yes. So <laughs> far, so good. Two other questions, my child. Well, you didn't actually answer it. I said, is there one? Then, no. I didn't know that I was a part of the riddle. The riddle. <laughs> You're a god. I definitely am. Question number uh, two. Come on, you got this. Oh, God. Come on. Come on. You're not stupid. Do you think I'm stupid? Nah. <laughs> it's really kind of noncommittal. It's yes or no only. I don't know how to... No. You're not stupid. You're beautiful. <laughs> I don't care what happens now. No third uh, question. Okay, I got, I? I got stuff to get back to. Guys, so. what, what should I ask? Ask if we know the thing he doesn't. Yes, of course. I, he didn't ask that. I'm not talking to you. Oh, sorry. This is, he has it on. Not my God, that bro. That was a freebie. He's got it on speakerphone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do we know the thing that he wants us to ask? I just told your friend, yes, Merle. God, I, okay, the answer to the second question is now yes. Is it about the movie Kazam? It's not about the movie Kazam. That wasn't me! That you, wasn't me! That I was told my you, Agnes! Speak your phone, homie. Listen, the three of you are sharp, sharp, sharp cookies. I know you can figure this one out. I've gotta go. I've oh I've got a pie baking in the oven. What is it? I forgot the word. Later. Uh, Shit. I, I would I have a I have a question for you. Okay, but I have to warn you, my patience is wearing pretty thin. I have a question for you. Are you ready? Yes. Who do we work for? And boom goes the dynamite. Who do we work for? He's sitting there just dormant. Um, and you hear the servos inside of him that have been, like, kind of uh, audible this whole time. They're, they're spinning up real fast. Uh, and uh, he says, um, I do not understand. I do not understand. I do not understand. Uh, and a little, a little bit of smoke is now pouring out of, uh, of his, uh, of his body. Uh, and he's kind of shaking, shaking very fast. Uh, the, the flame jets around you, so their, their pilot lights come on, uh, and you see them, uh, uh, start, start to kick into danger mode. Uh, but before they can do anything, Hodgepodge just explodes. Yay! Bum, 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 uh, that, that blue light, uh, that has been surrounding the room the whole time, uh, is now gone. Uh, and you just hear everybody just yelling at you all at once. Uh, you, you, you hear, uh, the, the director saying like, come in, come in, come in, uh, Magnus, Merle, Taco, come in, come in, come in. Is anyone there? Oh, Go for boys, Magnus. You, oh, thank goodness. You, you're, you're safe. Uh, and you, you hear Lucas, uh, you hear Lucas asking, asking how you guys are doing to, um, you hear Ango and he's crying. You hear Ango crying and he's like, I thought I I was helping you guys, and I knew I shouldn't have been doing it. And then Ango. when it went dead, I thought that you guys had died. And I was just trying to help, Angus. and I'm so sorry. I'm Director, so slap Angus for me. Uh, that doesn't... I think that would show up on a Do HR... It. He's a little boy, and I'm like an adult woman. Don't think smack... 
A little a light. Smacky one. It's smack a clock. Okay, a little one. <laughs> Ow, God. Pull yourself together, Ango. Someone quick get a picture. Get the on the ground. Kick him. Now kick him right in the butt. Kick him real hard in the butt. Push him, put, make some spaghetti and push him in the spaghetti. Oh, yeah, that's a good like one. Call him some names. You like yeah. a Patch Adams? I'm so, glad, I'm so glad that the three of you are right. <laughs> oh, God. Can you put an adult on the phone? We, had, we appreciate it, Amos. Yeah, let's talk to an adult, please. Anyway, I had this idea. What if you asked him something that the void fish had yeah, erased? No, he's and dead. He's dead. It's he fine. blowed up. He blowed up we real good. It. Oh, thank goodness. Okay. Well, but I, I love you. Bye. Okay. Oh. Lucas, I'm afraid we won't be able to endorse your robot. What happened? What I I lost contact. No, with yeah, you. you're supposed to say like me neither. Have you not seen Jurassic Park? Oh, me ne- me neither. Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> Just want to get that hot that hot Jurassic Park phone in. Clever girl, try to fit that one in. Uh, hey, can I just take a quick, super quick moment? If you're listening to the show right now and you just like busted out your Twitter fingers to say like you figured it out long before we did, just fuck go fuck yourself. Yeah, and we got gotcha. you. We got it. Okay, we got it. All right, we got a lot to consider. You are here. You are in the You're moment. Doing, There's a lot of pressure. You don't have to worry about voices. You don't have to worry about spells. Yeah. Like just, just stuff it. We got a sleeping baby. Got a sleeping baby right here, right and, here, and that that puts a hand, a damper yeah. on things. Uh, yeah. No, I was sort of the conduit for that future um, panic that you instilled in all our listeners. <laughs> I thought that puzzle wasn't too hard, but you did solve it. You've solved my puzzle of robot riddles. Um, congratulations. And hey, I, let's go down in the history books. It's dad's first useful spell. So we <laughs> got that going too. Um, Pan damn you. It, Pan damn you straight to Hades. Indirectly, sure, but still useful. <laughs> uh, the hatch to the uh, airlock opposite the one that you entered this room from uh, is now uh, illuminated with white light. Um, and I, uh, I pull one of Hodgepodge's arms off. Oh my God. <laughs> It's a theme. Yeah. It's a well, trope. I, I can't finish if I don't. You're going to look like some sort of like crazy prospector by the next adventure, just like walking around with like robot arms and mandibles. <laughs> or and, a spider. Or, or, I like to collect uh, mementos of my kills. Okay. Um, uh, th- my this kills, room, other than, the, other than the airlock, this room has gone pretty dark, uh, and you hear Lucas say, uh, oh, man, that was a big uh, a big burst of energy. When you, when you destroyed Hodgepodge, uh, you freed up all the energy he was using. You bought yourself about f- almost 40 minutes. Uh, hey, uh, I, uh, I, think, Lucas, I think we I'm might so- just survive this thing. I'm sorry we killed your robot son. That's not really what he was. He was a, you know, a product. Do you need a minute? Wasn't he? say a few he words? Or, yeah, or... wasn't he your robot son? No. Was he your robot wife? He was... His love was real, but he was not? That sort of thing? Yeah, tell us about it, Geppetto. No, he was just like a little, <laughs> he was a commercial product. Hey, are you sure. guys, can I ask a sure question? He was. Are you yeah. guys just mean to everybody? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yes, we, uh, we, we are. were not raised yeah. well. We are mean to everyone. I built okay, that's good. That's fun. It's not my problem. Oh, that was a sucky okay. son. Your son sucked. <laughs> All right. Are you making fun of my voice? Because I've got sinus problems that there's a reason for. I'm yes, <laughs> Okay, I'm going to hang up now. Uh, TTYL. Why don't you invent a neti pot next? <laughs> the line is dead. <laughs> oh, I liked him. I thought he was a uh, douche. So yeah, there's, we move through the portal, okay, or whatever. Yep, there's another, uh, there's another airlock. This one only has one uh, exit out of it. Um, uh, we take the left one. So you are deloused. Okay, you take the left <laughs> one of one. Uh, the one that's left. Uh, um, and uh, you find yourself in uh, a uh, a slightly larger circular room than the hodgepodge R and D chamber. Um, there are a few points of interest in this room there's a uh, a big uh, pillar in the middle of the room there is a uh, uh, s- some hanging ventilation uh, system uh, 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 overhead and there's a grate that has been busted out of the bottom of uh, one of these uh, uh, this 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 vent system uh, and the grate is now laying on the floor uh, so somebody clearly busted that out um, and there's a note on the pillar. Um, uh, uh, what looks like it was pretty quickly scrawled out that says, uh, 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 crashed in the ventilation system, going on ahead, meet you at elevators, K. That, sorry, cool. that K is, like, how they signed it. They weren't just like, we'll meet you at K. the elevators, K. K. Wait. 
Was that that Cruella chick? That's Killian. Killian? Yeah. But we just, we passed the elevators. No, you didn't. We are in a place called the Museum of Elevators or whatever. Oh. Uh, No, you're heading toward the the center of the compound, which are where the elevators are. Sorry. Those were just decorative. (laughs) Those were decorative. (laughs) uh, Faux elevators. elevators. It really pulled the room together. You got those at Ikea. Uh, This room, by the way, is not crystallized. Uh, it, it, it has not been crystallized. I thought everything uh, was crystallized. No, uh, the, the crystallization hasn't really like spread all the way throughout the, the lab. That's why we've been shutting the archaic airlocks or whatever behind yeah. us. Right. As you uh, approach the center pillar, uh, you see some movement come from behind it. Um, and you hear a voice uh, uh, say, uh, hello? And Hello? Uh, a, a robot oh. about the size and uh, shape of a car engine uh, floats out from behind the pillar, um, and instead of immediately setting you on on fire you or asking you riddles, right reference point for this call, we are super plugged in to how big a car engine is. <laughs> uh, I mean, real so, gear heads we are. Okay, well, how else would you describe something car car engine size? It's it's not, I don't I, know. I don't know how big a car I don't engine know is. How big a car engine is? Microwave size, refrigerator size. Make Red as big box. a make as big a hug shape with your arms as you can. That's the size of this thing. Got you. Um, so he's a hug shaped robot. Yeah. Like twelve sandwiches. It's it's a very huggable robot. Approximately twelve. Like a medium sized sam- Great Dane. <laughs> twelve sandwiches, sandwiches worth. I hug the robot. Uh, well, let me finish describing it first. Oh, okay. It has a sign saying, please don't hug. Uh, it's covered <laughs> in poisonous barbs. Uh, no, it, it looks like it was just kind of scrumbled together with leftover parts from other robots. Um, I hastily hide the arm in my pocket. Okay, yeah. that's. I quickly look up the word scrumbled. Uh, Justin said that in a monster factory, and I can't. I, I've started using it as though it were an actual word. Um, I'm the Lewis Carroll of my generation. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> this, this robot, its its core actually does look like a, a floating car engine, which I have written down here, now knowing that you have no fucking clue what I'm talking about. Um, it, it's just a big, heavy block of metal. Uh, imagine, if you're to give you a more robot-centric point of reference, more conky-shaped than, gotcha. than a, uh, you know, Alan Tudyk bot from my robot. Does it have arms, legs? It does. Um, and again, it looks like it's, it was made out of parts from other uh, robots. So it has this big Hulkin central core with these vents and ports that don't actually look like they're in use. Um, one of its arms uh, looks vaguely like humanoid shape, like it's got five five fingers and a hand, uh, but the metal doesn't actually m- match the the rest of the metal of the of its frame. It looks like it's cast from bronze. Um, the other arm is like a foot longer than, than, uh, the, the, the humanoid esque arm, uh, but it doesn't have a hand at the end of it. It just kind of has a hole, uh, at the end of it. Uh, and it's got these four small turbines that are giving off a faint blue light, uh, that are somehow keeping this thing levitating a few feet off the ground. It's not, it does not have legs. It's just kind of floating through the air. Um, and uh, there's a window in the center of its its central frame, and inside, uh, through that window, you can see what appears to be a pretty large glass uh, cylindrical fuse, uh, which illuminates whenever this thing talks. And it says, uh, "Are are you in need of assistance?" Hail and well met, mechanical man. I'm a I'm a <laughs> well I'm a robot, but I'm I'm programmed a as robot, a robot, huh? Okay. My my name is Noel. It doesn't have an L in it. Sorry. Oh God. What? Oh boy. <laughs> that's a real. That's a real stinker. I gotta tell you. Did, can I help you three out? Are you lost or what? Oh my you God. You are the first Noel we have ever met. <laughs> she looks at you, uh, uh, Merle, and she goes, "Oh my God, you are. You're hurt. Can I help? Can I fix you up?" Please fix Merle. <laughs> However <Yeah>. you can. <laughs> Whatever you could do would be appreciated. Um, and and be careful with your arms around Agnes May. <clears throat> what do you mean? Don't worry. Nothing. Okay. You'll see. You'll see. Uh, High five. Okay, give me, give me, hold on. Uh, Noel. Uh, uh, he, he goes. Uh, oh. uh, Noel gives goes to give. Magnus a high five. Magnus has a, a tape measure out. <laughs> Just getting the spot on his wall ready. Oh, oh very nice. Yes. Whoa, is that a is that a three sixty cam turner? That'll in the go middle? in the rumpus room <laughs> right there. It's gonna look there. real good on some red oak. <laughs> Hey 
everybody, this is Griffin McElroy, your dungeon master, your best friend, your bosom buddy. Is that the same thing as best friend? I don't know. I've never been quite sure what that term meant. I just assumed it was something gross. Thank you all so much for listening to The Adventure Zone episode 32, I think, uh, and the fourth chapter in our Crystal Kingdom saga. We really appreciate you listening. We appreciate you sharing the show, talking about the show. Uh, I want to say a big thanks to my buddy Evan Minsker, who wrote about the music for the show on Pitchfork. Uh, you can find uh, the, the article there. Uh, we, I really appreciate you writing that, man. It means a lot to me. Uh, let's let's get on to some personal messages. If you want to get a personal message on this show, just go to MaximumFun.org slash Jumbotron, and you'll find all the instructions on how to do so there. It's real easy, I promise. This first message is to Lucas, and it's from Amy. Amy says to Lucas, happy anniversary, darling face. This isn't a traditional gift, obviously. But given that I have an amazing husband who occasionally moves countries with me, I thought a message from a McElroy would be easier than shipping crockery to London. You are my favorite fellow adventurer, and I am so proud of us for making it this far. I can't wait to move somewhere. We'll both be foreigners, so you stop making fun of my accent. I love you today. Like that noncommittal. I mean, it's very, very sweet. I'm sure there's a sweet and personal story behind it, and I'm just crazy about all the love here. But I like it. Today we'll have to do. That's the message of the hit Broadway musical Rent. Here's another personal message. This one's for Tim Cullen, and it's from Zach Tartell. Zach says to Tim, Hey, Tim, I wanted to thank you for getting me into Pathfinder and making our group hangs even more fun. I love ignoring my beautiful wife for hours to Skype with you chumps and fight orcs and shit. I'll spend $100 to try and get you a fantasy Gashapon item. Tim plays an int-based ranged caster and rolled a six. Good luck, Tim. Uh, hashtag bring back Barry Blue Jeans. Uh, uh, oh, man. Uh, I'll, I'll, I will deliver that off the air. I don't want to give all my, my book of secrets away. I spent a long time writing that book of secrets, um, but I will make something up off the top of my head. How about one of those slime hands, one of those sticky hands that you get, and but instead of just it being a sticky hand that you annoy your mom with from the back seat of your minivan, it can talk. That was not a good one. My apologies. This next message is probably th- th- my favorite one maybe that's happened on this podcast so far. It makes me very happy. It's from Frank Texican, and it's to Barry Blue Jeans. <laughs> and Frank says to Barry Blue Jeans, Hey, buddy, arrangements at the Regal Beagle in Fandolin are set out for 44th Cake Day. They promise to have plenty of Shinerbach on tap reserved for us, and hundreds of virgin free-range chickens are available for hot wings. The best part, Kenny Chesney tickets. After this past craptastic year, I really need this break from real life. See you soon, my friend. I'm, I guess we're like almost a year late on delivering this message, maybe, um, because I have terrible, <laughs> terrible news for you. Uh, I, this is wonderful. Please, please, everybody keep sending in fiction Jumbotron messages. I want to thank everybody who's been tweeting about the show using the, the Zonecast hashtag on Twitter. We really appreciate how amazing everybody's been in sharing the show. We don't advertise the show. Word of mouth is literally all we have to go on. So you telling a friend is the only way that we can can get bigger and um, have, have more people be a member of the, the Zonecast fam. Uh, if you tweet using the, the Zonecast hashtag, you might end up as a character. Like two characters you're going to meet in the second half of our episode uh, uh, who are named after uh, Chloe Noel. That's Clobird on Twitter and Ernest Wheeler on Twitter. Uh, thank you both for listening to the show. Enjoy being immortalized in our fiction forever. Um, we're going to have a bunch of new characters next week, so I guess minor spoiler alert. Uh, I mean, I don't know. They could all die within the first few minutes of the rec- recording, and then we have to change plans. But uh, tweet about the show, the Zonecast, hashtag. We appreciate it very, very much. Hey, do me a favor. Go listen to the other shows on the Maximum Fun Network. There's a ton of very, very, very good shows all waiting for you to listen to them. There's Stop Podcasting Yourself. There is Bunker Buddies. There is Sawbones. Uh, I, I'm going to take a while here to plug a bunch of new McElroy projects. Uh, first of all, we have a new website called McElroyShows.com. Yes, it's a little bit egotistical that we have a website tracking all of our different projects, but I'm looking at the website now, and it's kind of ridiculous how many pies we got our toes in. Not our toes. Gross. That's nothing. Travis and Teresa... Uh, launched a new podcast called Schmanners this week, and it's about etiquette in the real world and how we should all be using it and stop being such clowns. It's called Schmanners. It's really, really good. Sydney and her little sister Riley launched a new show called Still Buffering, and it's all about hashtag teen life. 
Uh, that one is also on Maximum Fun. Rachel and I launched a podcast called Rose Buddies. Uh, you can find that on iTunes. It's where we talk about The Bachelor. It's really, really uh, a great show, especially if you're a member of The Bachelor Nation. And uh, I think uh, tomorrow, this is going up on Thursday, so Friday, uh, I'm going to be launching a new podcast for Polygon uh, with Polygon's Nick Robinson where we talk about video games. There's a lot of stuff going on, and I'll probably remind you of it over the next couple episodes. Uh, I try not to self-promote too much, but we just have a lot of stuff going on. So um, that's what's up. That's it for the commercials. I hope you enjoyed the rest of the episode. The next episode will be going up on February 11th. So we will talk to you then. Bye. Noel uh, floats towards you, Merle, and a uh, a cavity opens up. A, a little hatch opens uh, on her central frame, and a syringe pops out of it. Oh. Uh, and the syringe is full of a green fluid, and she starts to uh, float in in your direction uh, with this syringe. She goes, now hold real still. Is it laundry detergent? No, <laughs> it's not. It's- it's super power juice. Well, being a cleric, I recognize a healing touch when I see it. Stick it in me. Okay. Uh, yeah, this needle, uh, uh, first of all, passes through your suit. And you die. Uh, and uh, you feel a little poke <laughs> in, your, in your arm, but you're basically like getting a booster shot. And uh, you get healed uh, for 3d10 plus 6 damage. If you want to roll that. Yeah. Here we go. 6. Two, nine, six, two, nine. This is a cover all bingo. 17 plus six, uh, 20. You get healed for 23 points of damage. And you f- you feel like energized yeah. after this thing shoots you up. And it was heroin. Ah. Oh, uh, you're addicted. And now you're addicted now. to heroin. No, again, heroin. Um, Sorry, it, it'll take me a little bit to synthesize more more of this, this uh, first aid fluid, but. Um, <laughs> we don't, I don't need any more. Okay. Screw these guys. Uh, Noel, pleasure to meet you. Um, it's real nice to meet you, too. Hey, what are the three of y'all doing here? We're looking for Lucas. Lucas is in towards the center of the lab, but uh, you, y'all can't get over there. This, it's been crystallized, and I've, I've seen what happens if, if, you, if you touch the crystal. You get turned into crystal. And so I, well, it's, we, it's pretty unsafe for y'all to, to be going around. We got these suits. suits. Yeah, the, the suits keep us that from happening to us. Oh, so you guys have those. Front. Y'all have null suits. Yeah, of course. So I, I guess you'd be okay um, to, to go in and try and find him. Have you seen some other people come through here looking for Lucas? Um, no, I must have missed him. I'm, there are other folks here, too? Don't worry about it. Can you show us the way to Lucas, please? Uh, well, yeah, sure. Um, there's another, uh, uh, airlock hatch, um, uh, directly across from the one that you, uh, you, you came into this room from. You figure it just goes in deeper toward the, the center of the compound. Uh, however, on the right side of this room, as you came in, uh, there are two other hatches. And, uh, um, one of them has a plaque hanging over it that says Lucas's private quarters, um, the the scanner, the hand scanner that you've been using to open up all these uh, uh, airlocks, uh, the the hand scanner on this one is actually red, which you haven't seen before. The others have been green and have opened uh, pretty pretty easily whenever you touch them. Uh, the other hatch isn't illuminated at all. Uh, it's it looks like it's completely powered down. Um, yeah, those those are the other two doors in this uh, chamber. And you Noel, know, before we uh, go on, uh, tell uh, what's with them other doors. Well, those are that's I mean that's where that's Lucas's private quarters. You can read, right? No, yeah, cool, cool, cool. Is he in there? No, that's just like where he sleeps and keeps his, you know, keeps all his stuff. What kind of stuff? Fun stuff? Well, I don't know, like his personal belongings. I don't I like I, toys. I don't go in there usually. Um that's Do you have access to it? Um I mean, I could Ask, I'm asking for a friend. I guess I could open it up. Uh, and you hear uh, uh, Lucas come in through that pendant and say, "Like, uh, hey, hey, excuse me, can you not do that? Can you, would you mind please not going into my my room?" I cover up the pendant. <laughs> I'm Lucas, and I say let him go in the room. I don't think that was actually. I don't think that was actually. Should I roll a ventriloquism check or? Uh, you could do a performance check or a bluff check. 
Whichever one you love. Well, sure, sure, sure. By the way, sure. this episode of The Adventure Zone, the part of Noel being played by Delta Burke. <laughs> Let's see. Performance. I got plus one to that, so that's a six. Okay, you literally just go like, Hey, it's me, Lucas, and I'm thinking to let him go in the room. Why and don't you we did ask- it with your you did it with your fucking wide open mouth. <laughs> Shouldn't we just ask Lucas which door to go through? I No. Oh wait, this is OOC to Dad. I don't trust him at all. Okay. Like, I don't like him at all, and nobody yeah. does, so I don't want to ask him shit about shit. Yeah. Okay, I then let me ask you this. What does OOC mean? <laughs> Out of character. <laughs> okay, you know the OC, you know the, the the teen drama OC? This That's is like the, this is the prequel. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Cool. Ordinary right. Orange County. Um and now back uh, we Noel are. Uh, Noel, what's with the um, shutdown door there? The one, the other one. Oh, um, we we don't really use that room anymore. Um, there, um, yeah, it's it's just it's vacant, but we we just don't use it anymore. It's sort of just a you know, every every lab has a derelict room in it. So, is that like an old saying? Yeah, While they're like chatting. Just... I wander behind Noel. Okay. Yeah. No, that's just kind of like common common knowledge. If you have a lab. Here you gotta have you gotta a, have a derelict you gotta room. Have a derelict I room think my grandmother it. crocheted that on something. Yeah, I'm gonna cast a disguise self on myself okay. to make All me right. appear like Lucas. All right, yeah. You have uh, Noel. Might, might I say you have uh, uh, beautiful arms? Oh, well, thank you. I mean, it's hey, more uh, more. Hey, f- what's going on here? Oh my! Oh, Lucas. How did you? Yeah, I, I'm gonna give you advantage, but I'm still going to need you to make a bluff check of your. Does your voice change magically automatically using? Uh, I thought that was breathtakingly yeah, accurate. Yes. Are you sure about that? Otherwise, you can't change your body type, so you must adopt a form that has the same number of basic range of limbs. I'm Otherwise, less worried about that. I'm more worried about your voice. Let me finish. Otherwise, the extent of the illusion is up to you. So your handprint could match as well. Yeah. I'm hoping it won't come to that, but I could I could try. That seems a little crazy. Like that doesn't make sense to me. I, I like. I think it's only I visual. I don't think out. it. I don't think it affects your voice. But I'll give you because you're now disguised. I will give you advantage on a a buffer performance. As we check. we have established previously in fiction that Taco is a master of impersonating voices, as we saw with little Jerry. Yeah, yeah sure. that's true. That has been already established. It's in fiction. Yeah. Uh, bluff check is. Wait, what do I add to that? Bluff. Oh, sorry. No, performance. Is there no bluff? Nope. Fuck, nope, man. nope. I don't know these skills at all. Uh, 18. Okay, yeah, that that works. She buys it. Oh, Lucas. Well, uh, how did you get how did you get out? I thought you were trapped behind I have, the I I have a null suit. Where do you think they got it? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I guess I I guess I didn't think of that. Okay. Well, yeah, these uh, guys work with me. Can you pop open the? Uh, I lo- I lost my hands. Can you pop open the? Uh, <laughs> no, you're wearing gloves for I'm the null suit. I'm wearing gloves for the null suit. Can you open my personal quarters, please? Yeah, I mean that was kind of a weird series of things. It you was said. weird how it happened like that, but that's this is what's <laughs> happening. <laughs> I agree that it didn't make like, but you're you can't understand okay. um, the complexity of human interaction. All right, a whole well, dance right. tat a tat, if you okay. will. Okay, yeah, sure. We're all right. She she floats over to the to the scanner, uh, and uh, she has a little uh, uh, satellite dish looking thing attachment on her central core frame that she uh, just sort of waves in the direction of the scanner, and it turns green. Uh, well, here here you go. Um, we we should really get the the heck out of here, don't you think? It seems. Like this place is gonna is gonna go down. Yeah. Um. Can you? Uh, hey, uh, Magnus or Merle, whichever one of you guys, can you go down and get the thing that we need? Oh, definitely, definitely, definitely. I I go into the room. Okay. Yeah, because I'm feeling a little woozy from the snot shot he gave me a few <laughs> minutes ago. Um. Are you just making up effects now, Dad? Shh. <laughs> oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. All right, I go down into. Wait, which character am I? Um. Magnus goes into the room. Okay. Uh, yeah, you you pass through a uh, another airlock, uh, and uh, on the other side of that airlock, you are in Lucas's uh, private quarters, um, and it is filthy. It's a filthy room. Lucas is a dirty boy. There's like dirty dishes all over the room. There's papers strewn all over the place. Um, if there's a floor in Lucas's private quarters, you you cannot see it. Uh, the bed's not made. Uh, there's food on the bed. There's towers of books all over the room. Um, 
And uh, other than sort of this this huge mess, the only feature uh, worth noting is a uh, a pretty long desk in the back of the room uh, with a uh, a lamp on it. Um, and that is also the only sort of light source that's on in this room. Okay, I'm going to check out the desk. Okay. Um, you're just checking it out? Are you making a roll? Or? I'm making a roll, I guess. I'm investigating. Okay. Uh, 18 plus zero. 18. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, uh, with that roll, you can see... Well, you can clearly see on the top of the desk uh, is a, a, a little um, magnifying glass uh, sitting on a, a tray... And this tray has uh, a bunch of these very small, uh, broken little pieces of various gemstones. Um, you see some some amethyst, a few very small pieces of diamond. You see some little uh, slivers of pearl. Um, now all of them look like they are uh, sort of broken off of uh, uh, bigger chunks. Um, some there's some sapphire, some ruby in there, uh, but they're all pretty small. But you estimate all of these gemstones to be worth about twelve hundred gold pieces. Yoink. Okay. I am going to take those for safekeeping. Okay. Hmm. Uh and uh uh with that with that investigation check you made, you also notice there there are a couple drawers uh to the side of the desk that don't seem to have anything of value in it. Uh but with that investigation check, you uh find a very, very small uh hidden compartment underneath uh the, the bottom of the desk uh that is locked up tight. Okay. I got um, this. I've got my nitpicker. We've got then use it. Bud the nitpicker, he can unlock it. Cool. <laughs> this is awesome. Are you guys are, are you guys coming to Lucas? This is why it's felt like that every time we've been effective. If you can believe it, imagine <laughs> writing a high like this at least once per episode. <laughs> Sometimes even twice. I gave you life. That's true. I gave you. You have my but genetic you material gave, that I gave. Yeah, you gave me you. life. Apparently, mom gave me D and D skills. Weirdly, <laughs> apparently, <laughs> just like genetically speaking, it's the only thing that makes sense. It is passed down through the mother. I'm That's sorry, just... you're not going to harsh my vibe. Ain't nothing going to break on my stride. Okay, then use your damn nitpicker. Okay, so, Merle, you're moving to the room. Talker, are you coming in as well? No, I'm watching. I'm keeping a lookout, baby. Okay. Wait, there may be stuff to steal. My new my new thing is, like, ta- like Magnus rushes in. Taco's good out here. My new thing is <laughs> Taco's good out here, because that's a lot less work for me. I can just, yeah. just kind of, like, chill. Merle, do you have a motto vis-a-vis bravery? Uh... Yes, it's not for the faint-hearted. Okay, I'm not sure how that applies to anything. Uh, is are, that your motto, or are you just afraid to tell us that because your motto will shock us all? I, I don't want. Yeah, I need a little time to. We're talking t-shirts and posters, so yeah, let sure. me come up with something down the road. Okay, I take Bud, the little nit. Is that what you've named him? It just you know, it sounds so cute. Okay, Bud, and he oh, and he looks like a garden gnome. Yep, and. Um, Except he's got a backwards ball cap on. I take him and I, I put him in front of the, the lock drawer and I say, Bud, I, I need you to pick this lock. And, of course, you are free to pick the nits and be as critical as you want of us. While oh, boy. Oh, boy. Thanks for the permission. Boy, I sure do appreciate that. My good man, Merle. Uh, he, he, he starts to animate as soon as you get him in the vicinity of this uh, locked lock. <laughs> Uh, he said, and what, what did you, what have you been calling me this whole time? What have you, what did you call me? What did you I'm say my name you, was? Bud. Okay. I'm calling you, un- you Bud. You understand. I'm like a living thing. You can't just like go around and being like, oh, well that bird's name is Terry because I saw it. You, you hey, understand hey, this, right? Hey, Bud, pick the damn lock. I'm, I'm, go, I'm getting, fish. you know, I'm, I'll get to it. He, uh, he pulls out a. You a, sound a, like Sheldon Leonard. <laughs> he pulls out a, uh, a, uh, like a rolled up. Uh, a cloth thing that he, he uh, unfurls, and you see a number of uh, lock picks and uh, tools uh, inside, and he takes a couple of them out, and he goes, uh, I have a name, by the way, and it's not Bud. You can't... Okay, I'm coming up with a new name for you, Merle. Your new name is Joshua. How do you like that? It hurts, don't it? No, I kind of like that. Joshua High Church. That actually Joshua sounds good. Joshua High Tower High Church. <laughs> Joshua Merle, High Tower High Church. My name is Ernest, okay? <laughs> Just like common courtesy, you can call me by the name that my mom gave me, which was Ernest, not hey, Bud. Hey, Ernest. I mean, thank you. You call um, me Vern. 
Oh, boy. Now pick the damn lock. I'm working on the lock. It's a tricky lock, okay? I'm a little man. What do you want me to do? I'm a little man. Boy, how... Pick some nits on them now. <laughs> hey, I'm trying to imagine this. Does he just, like, have his little hand crammed in the lock? And then, like, <laughs> grabbing no, tum- he's got all those little pins tools. and tumblers. Yeah, he's, he's, he's gotten rid of his tools, and he's just, like, he's getting in there. He's, he's elbow deep in this lock. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. It pinched me. Ugh. Hate these locks. I'm, but I'm so good at this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, unlike unlike you guys, you know what you guys are good at. You know what you guys are good at solving what? solving riddles that robots gave you, huh? Thank. No, you. it only took you twenty five minutes. It was great. <laughs> well, it was tough. I appreciate the compliment. Yeah. No, this is genuine. This is we've ju- we're just now meeting. This is how I sound when I'm being genuine. Oh, thank you. I'm just saying in general, the three of you are. He says that. I'm just saying the three of you in general are very good at paying attention to your surroundings and remembering the clues that you see in those surroundings. Thank you for very later much. Con- we really using and then using that. those clues to solve later conflicts. It's I, like your I, three's I, core competency. You're like the fucking you're like superheroes for remembering thank and you. observing shit. I feel that like, means a lot to I me, feel bud. Like Ernest is reading ahead to the subreddit comments on this episode. <laughs> it's like just reading pe- what people said about it. My favorite part is when the robot literally said say the thing that you know that I don't and that wasn't enough of a of a hot hot hint for you guys I'm glad you to solve that. to solve the daily double well you know sometimes <laughs> it takes a second but we got there thank you i hate the three of y'all's brains you hear a click okay great put them in your bag okay yeah. well okay good thanks i open the door way to thank way to thank he tell me he's afraid away. of the dark he yells way to thank as you jam him into your backpack <laughs> Uh, you pry out, uh, the, the, the secret drawer, and, uh, uh, inside is a, a small velvet bag, uh, with a, a little cinch on it, a little, little small string cinch, um, and as you undo it, Magnus, are you the one f- yes. doing this? Okay. Uh, as, as you uncinch it and, and, uh, uh, open up the bag, you pull out from inside what looks like an old... A uh, compact mirror, um, and the exterior of this mirror uh, is uh, is is woven in this ornate uh, silver pattern that is actually kind of tarnished. Um, uh, and yeah, that 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 is what was inside of the bag is this compact like uh, uh, mirror. Wait, I know this one. I polish it. Uh, you you tried to, but th- this tarnished is like. Is on there. This this thing, and is, then a genie is a comes little, out. It's a little old, um, and a genie comes out. Two genies come out. No, no genies. Two genies. I open it. Okay, uh, you open it, and inside isn't actually uh, like a, a reflective mirror. Um, inside is actually just a a circular disc of emerald. And it looks it looks flawless. This this circular emerald disc, um, and it's not reflecting your image. But as you look into it, you actually start to see some moving figures inside of it. And as they take form, you can see clear as day into this scene. You see um, you see two men sitting on a, a pretty comfortable looking sofa with a big pit bull splayed out on top of them, and they're looking at this flashing illuminated box on the other side of the room. And then suddenly the image changes and you're looking at uh, sort of an older woman who's sitting in the driver's seat of some sort of vehicle and she's listening to the smoothest jazz in a line of other vehicles in front of a building with a a sign with a big burger on top of it. And then you see another image. You see a young woman who's curled up in a a, like a bay window nook in a dark house. She's watching a, a heavy snowstorm outside. She's drinking tea, and she she looks like she's tinkering with some sort of handheld device with these two glowing panels on it. And then you see another image of like a CD bar where this three piece rock band is playing to a, a a pretty small crowd, but but everyone in the crowd is singing along to every word of their songs. And then you see another image of an old man who's uh, asleep. Uh, he's wearing what appears to be like earmuffs. He's in a large metal tubular room with these rows of mostly full seats, and there's a loud whirring noise in this room. Um, you see a bundled up woman hiking up a steep hill and behind her you see a brightly lit uh, city skyline that's towering over this massive harbor full of boats and and the buildings in this skyline are taller than any you've ever seen before and like every 10 seconds or so your perspective looking into this mirror just shifts 
and it's it's showing you more and more scenes of of this impossible world. Griffin, I'm sorry, I had to run out of the room real quick. Could you oh, say man, that again? that's my least least favorite <laughs> Adventure Zone players <laughs> bit. Okay, so he's stealing technological ideas from our world. Uh, are you saying this in character or? Well, this is me saying it to like Justin and Dad and Griffin. Uh, okay, I don't know any of this, but you could say it to Dad if you want. No, no, no. This is me saying it like we were sitting at a table yeah, in but real I life can't and not spread out all you, the I need you to come out and relate that information to me. Otherwise, I won't be able to implement it in any meaningful way. Okay, I will, com- I will communicate it to Taco in a minute. <laughs> okay. Right now, I'm telling Justin. Yeah, but like you got to think of a way to tell <laughs> Lucas because I'm Lucas right now. Okay, I got you. Cool. Um, I think we're dealing with like a Bioshock Infinite looking through the portals and stealing. That's how they came up with elevators. I, I don't this know. might be Griffin's incredibly complicated way to justify to listeners why there are elevators in this world. <laughs> oh my god, it's all been retcon for elevators. It's all been for this. <laughs> well, retcon, in, this retcon implies that I didn't have this plan. Oh yeah, from yeah, day, yeah. From day I, one. I can remember when we were planning for this show. Griffin said, "And hey, wait till you hear how I came up with how to get elevators in it." It's a twist they'll never <laughs> see. Never see coming, but I'll be dropping elevator hints throughout. It's his Kaiser Soze moment. <laughs> All right, I throw the, I throw, I close the compact. Okay, I put it in my bag. Okay, uh, you you hear a voice come through your pendant. Hey, you guys aren't in my room right now, are you? I haven't, no. I haven't checked in with you in a while. No, completely unrelated though. Like, have you ever thought about like a maid service just for like the whole lab in general? I mean, I have help here, but um, I don't know if you noticed, Who? but the parts of my uh, laboratory are covered in virulent crystal. That if you touch it, you get turned into crystal and die. What can you tell us about Noel? Uh, you guys found Noel. Yeah, she's just like uh, she's just uh, like an, she's just like an assistant. She just helped. Why does she look cobbled together from other parts? Um, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm sorry that my design apparently isn't up to your standards. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Well, we just saw like another robot buddy who was like real well put together, and she kind okay, of yeah, like they're shit. not cut from the same cloth, right? Like, I uh, did you build her when you were like eight? No, I. <laughs> She's Please one of my character voice, Travis. Character I'm voice. You. Is she your first robot? Uh, no, I, she's at, she's one of my more. Did you build her from a kit and you forgot to look at the cover of the box? She's one of my more recent. Okay, she looks a little rough on the outside, but you're not really appreciating her genius. What she's supposed to like end up looking like the U.S. Enterprise or you're something? You're just so and obsessed with what she like... looks like. You don't even think about the fact that it, yeah, the the buddy bot looked really cool, right? Mm-hmm. But he 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 only had pre-programmed answers built into him. Noelle can think. She's she's ah. You guys are so frustrating. You don't appreciate any of these things that I'm making that hey, are going to change. What's the deal with the shutdown room? Oh, that's that's just a derelict room. You know how every lab just has a derelict room in it? No, no. D- no. Is that a thing? Yeah, it's just a room we don't use. It's a big lab, okay? It's we we just don't use. Griffin, is there like a porthole or something on the uh, door that I can look in uh, of the shutdown room? So you're going back down out to the yeah. You... We're we're out of his shitty room. Okay, okay, but you better fucking hang up on him because I'm up here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I cover the the thing again. Okay. Uh, no, there's there's no porthole. Um, there's there's no little peephole looking into the room. Um, there is as as you look over. Um. Uh, the the shut down door. There is, um, you see some holes, like very very small holes in the uh, wall above the door, uh, and uh, it, it, there's like a little. You can see like a faint sort of impression, uh, and it's right where the plaque is on on uh, Lucas's side that says Lucas's sleeping quarters, where that looks like it would be over this door. It's just gone. Um, uh, whose sleeping quarters was this? And right as you say that, uh, uh, you hear a sound that sounds like boom. And uh, uh, as you turn to investigate the source of this sound, you see a rift in space uh, about 20 feet in front of you, uh, close to the central pillar in the middle of this room. And from out of that rift, you see a little chunk of pink tourmaline. And that pink tourmaline is illuminated from inside with a white light. Um, and as soon as it pops through that rift, it falls to the ground. And as soon as it touches the ground, the room begins to transform. Uh, it starts to spread out from, from where that crystal uh, touched the ground. It climbs up the pillar and spreads uh, all over the ceiling. 
Uh, it's spreading all over the walls, uh, and it uh, takes over the whole room. And then almost as soon as the transformation is complete, you begin to hear them tinkle crinkles again. Oh, here they come, those tinkle crinkles. Oh, yeah, we're in null suits. I was trying to get really worried for a second. Uh, yeah, you are totally safe. Um, and uh, Noelle Noel is kind of panicked, and she is becoming very uh, cognizant of where she is floating, uh, making sure not to touch anything. Um, and you hear those tinkle crinkles, and they're building, and they're building, and they seem to be playing another melody um, as, as they build. And then you hear that voice that you heard back in the conservatory, and it sings another verse of its song. I saw the young universe Fall from the places we should see But for my vision It's fire. Cool. It's fire. Did you guys notice uh, the voice said, but for? <laughs> Do you guys, um, what's a but for? <laughs> for pooping, silly. Uh, the central pillar in the room that is now completely crystallized begins to <laughs> groan. Sorry, did you say <laughs> Billy crystallized? <laughs> All right, that's the end of the episode. Cliffhanger! We're Billy crystallized. No! You look marvelous. <laughs> Yeah, oh, I hate it when that happens. Oh, God. Who's that? Is that Mario from Mario? MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. Hello, Internet. I'm Travis McElroy. And I'm Teresa McElroy. She is my wife. And he's my husband. And it is our pleasure to introduce to you a brand new podcast. Schmanners. It's extraordinary etiquette. For ordinary occasions. Teresa, let me ask you this. Can you teach me how to write a thank you note? Yes, I can. How about tips to improve my table manners? I'll do my best. And will you finally explain to me the difference between casual and business casual and cocktail and formal and black tie and all that stuff? If anybody can, I can. But like, it's going to be funny, right? Of course, I'm going to give historical origins and how those manners fit into our everyday lives. How could it not be funny? But also sometimes we'll talk about like burps and farts, right? Yeah, when not to. But we'll still talk about it. Yes. Great. So come join us for our new hilarious show. No RSVP required. Coming to you soon every Friday on MaximumFun.org. It's Schmanners. Manners, Schmanners. Get it?